Welcome to chapter 21. The last two chapters of this has the story of the Levite and his concubine going at, to go back to his home in the in the mountains of Ephraim from Bethlehem. The marriage it doesn't say that it was a wife; it was like a concubine. So. Uh, the different issues in these in this story are very interesting. Uh, marriage and uh, if there was a marriage, to, and how his relationship was to the his wife or the woman, uh, and so forth. We saw, and then uh, as the issue of hospitality, where it's going by an ungodly town to go to where a godly town would be, is what they did, but yet. It turned out to be the worst thing possible as then rape and murder occurred and the woman was killed and then the Levite cut her body up, sent it to the 12 tribes and they um, wanted retribution and they ended up coming against the tribe of Benjamin and defeated the tribe of Benjamin. Then we go into this chapter here at the end, and I believe it's two separate uh, accounts of what happened. Uh, I'm not. I'll, I'll show you why, but it may and it may not be. But the first one here it says, "Wives for the tribe of Benjamin," and the man of Israel swore by an oath in Mizpah, saying, "In Mizpah, I'll go to our map." Real quick here, and Mizpah is over, um, over here on the eastern side, the Jordan River. And they said, uh, "Not a man from out of us shall give his daughter to Benjamin for a wife." So, uh, no uh, man from Benjamin would be able to marry a woman from another tribe. That's what they're saying. They're gonna, they're making this uh, oath as as it was. And all the people came unto Bethel and sat there until evening before God and lifted their voice and wept a great a weeping. And Bethel is uh, Shiloh. There it is down here. And they came to Bethel and wept over this. And they said, Why, O Lord God of Israel, has this taken place in Israel? To overlook today in Israel one tribe, why did why why do we had this war and this one tribe has got wiped out? And it happened in the next day that the people rose early and built there an altar and offered a whole burnt offering for deliverance. Now I'm not sure if it was in the temple. If it was the temple, I believe it was in Shiloh, but uh, whether or not this was Levitically, the correct thing to do, I'm not sure, but um, the people built there the altar and offered a whole burnt offering. And the sons of Israel said, Who is the one not ascending among the assembly from out of all the tribes of Israel to the Lord? I mean, who didn't go to war with us? For there was a great oath concerning the ones not ascending to the Lord in Mizpah saying, to death he shall die. So if the people that were chosen didn't go, to death he shall die. And the sons of Israel relented uh, concerning their brother Benjamin. They're, they're softening up towards Benjamin after defeating him and said, uh, one tribe from out of Israel is removed today. It was terrible to break up a tribe and it's, it's gone basically where all the men were killed most of all the men and the women. What should we do to them, uh, to the ones left behind for wives? The men that of Benjamin that uh, didn't have women because the women were all killed. For we swore by an oath to the Lord to not give to them from our daughters for wives. And they said, well, what one is there of the tribes of Israel which ascended not to the Lord in Mizpah? And behold, not a man came to the camp from Jabesh Gilead to the assembly. Now, I'm not sure if it has Jabesh Gilead on here or not. Um, 
No, I don't see Jabish Gilead. Well, Gilead is over here. So Jabish Gilead should be, there it is up here. Jabish Gilead. So they didn't come down and fight. And the people were numbered. And behold, there is not there a man from the ones dwelling in Jabesh Gilead. So they counted, and there was no man from Jabesh. And the congregation sent there 12,000 men from the sons of the force. So they go up north, and they gave charge to them, saying, Go and strike all the ones dwelling in Jabesh Gilead by the mouth of the broadsword, even the women and the people. And this is the word which you shall do. Every male and every woman knowing the marriage bed of a man, you shall devote to consumption. They'll to die. And they found of one's dwelling, Jabesh Gilead, 400 young women virgins. And the Parthenus um, is a virgin, does, did not know a man. So this word is used many places, but yet... Um, I'm not exactly sure who who um, has changed it to young women, uh, and if it's in the, um, but this is what the Jews try to change it to mean, in the say in the Hebrew. But yet they translated it into Parthenus, which is a virgin. We have the Parthenon in Athens, Greece, and which is a temple to the virgins, and they would not like you calling it just to the young women. So they found 400 that knew not a man in the marriage bed of a man. And they led them into the camp in Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan. So they come up, uh, brought them down and across, and there's Shiloh here. Bring all these 400 women. And all the congregation sent and spoke to the sons of Benjamin at the rock of Ramon, which is where they fled, and they called them for peace. And Benjamin returned, and that was up further north, uh, that rock of Ramon. And Benjamin returned to the sons of Israel in that time. And they, uh, that is Israel, gave to them the women who were from out of the women of Jabesh Gilead. And it pleased them thus, so they can have these women for wives. Uh, and the people were comforted concerning Benjamin, the people of Israel, for the Lord made a breach among the tribes of Israel. The Lord had uh, made this, told them to go to war, basically. Now, here I see it changing because it says, and the elders of the congregation said, well, what shall we do to the remaining for wives? Now, it could be another instance of uh, another story, or it could be the remaining, uh, other than the 400, there wasn't enough women for the rest of the men of Benjamin. So that's a possibility too. Uh, now that the woman uh, was removed from out of Benjamin when they were all killed, and he said, there must be an inheritance to the ones surviving to Benjamin that in no way a tribe should be wiped out from out of Israel. So it doesn't sound like they, that part here knows about what happened with the women from Jabesh, Gilead. And it says, For we are not able to give to them wives from our daughters. And this was exactly the same thing that was uh, said in verse 1 of this chapter. So I, I see this as another story. For the sons of Israel swore by an oath, saying, Accursed is the one giving a wife to Benjamin. <clears throat> and they said, Behold, uh, there is a holiday to the Lord in Shiloh from days to days. Shiloh. Now we'll go find Shiloh on here, and that's right there. Shiloh. And Shechem is up here. It'll be mentioned here. And there's another town that's in between. <clears throat> They'll be mentioned. And so, uh, which is north of Bethel, according to the rising of the sun, in the corridor ascending from Bethel unto Shechem and from south of Labona, which is in between. 
And they gave charge to the sons of Benjamin, saying, Go forth and lie in wait in the vineyards. And you shall look and behold, whenever the daughters of the ones dwelling in Shiloh should come forth, joining in a dance with a company of dancers, that you shall come forth from the vineyards. And let each uh, le- and let a man seize by force to himself a wife from out of the daughters of Shiloh. Now, why they would take him from Shiloh, it doesn't say, and I don't know why. That's why I just, the, to me, these are two stories of the same thing. And you shall depart into the land of Benjamin, to the men. And it will be whenever their fathers or their brothers should come to quarrel with us, that we shall say to them, Well, show mercy on them, these men. For a man did not take to himself a wife uh, in the battle, for you did not give to them according to the time which you trespassed. So it sounds like now they're putting some type of a blame, a trespass on Shiloh, but it doesn't say exactly what it is. Maybe it was the same thing. Nobody uh, went to the war from Shiloh. And... The sons of Benjamin did thus and took wives, according to their number, from the ones dancing whom they snatched. So these women were there coming out dancing, and they grabbed them and hauled them back to Benjamin as a wife. And they went and returned into their inheritance in Benjamin and built up the cities and dwelt in them. Well, Benjamin was uh, is down here, so they took him uh, from Shiloh down back down to Benjamin. And the sons of Israel walked from there in that time, each man to his tribe. Now, as I mentioned, I believe this whole story was at the very beginning, right after um, the book of Joshua, because it says that Phinehas was the high priest at that time. So this would have put it right after Joshua, his death probably. And so each man did what he wanted unto his kin, And each man went forth from there to his inheritance, went to their place. In those days there was not a king in Israel. Uh, Man did the upright thing in his eyes. So they uh, didn't have these rules, so they kind of did whatever they thought would be the upright thing. But yet, uh, obviously, Gibeah, the people of Gibeah, did not have... Uh, the upright thing, because when the Levite came there, they uh, raped his wife and basically uh, killed her and uh, that whole thing. So it was a terrible time that was going on. And then it went through all the uh, different judges after this story here, I believe, and possibly the story earlier of Micah and his idol and and the Levite from Bethlehem, that might have been earlier too. Next chapter, or I'm sorry, book, we'll go into uh, Ruth. And now Ruth was definitely at the end of all of the judges. Um, and we'll f- find out in the fourth chapter that um, how Ruth was related to David, the king who will come within, I don't know, maybe 70 or 80 years. So until the next time, I hope you'll join us in the book of Ruth. And until then, God bless.